Welcome to WTF, West Bank Talks Finance, the podcast that turns WTF moments into knowledge that you can use to make informed financial decisions. Subscribe to get notifications when we release new episodes. Today we are talking credit, credit scores, a very interesting topic. Uh, we pick it up a lot in our social media engagements um, and people really, you know, ask sort of interesting questions. And I'll pick up on a few things that, you know, that come up on the social media. Um, welcome to Yako uh, van Jarsveld from Experian. Uh, we do source the experts. And Rudolf Mahoney, who has been in runabout, everything that has to do with motor, from sales to collections, front office, back office, so we really have the experts, we source the experts, just to make these things understandable. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, good. Thank I you really, so much, Labs. Thank you. Thank you, Rudolf. I really want us to have a conversation, a chat. Let's think, you know, it's Sunday afternoon, we're at a braai, and this thing comes up. Credit score. So, Yako, I'm going to go straight to you. What is a credit score, if you have to explain it simply? Yeah, well, a credit score, number one, is probably one of the most important three digits in your financial journey as a consumer and as complicated as it may sound it's literally as simple as it's three digits that translates into the way that you conduct your current credit behavior so if you've got accounts whether it's a motor vehicle account whether it's a credit card account irrespective of which accounts they are it's the way that you pay for those accounts that you have and the way that you manage them translated into three digits that the higher the score the better your bureau score or your credit score and the lower the score the worse your score and we'll get into the detail what influences the score okay. but literally i think what consumers always need to consider is that don't be afraid of the score it's three digits that will empower you to make decisions and it will empower you to have a very constructive conversation with a credit provider when you have a chat with rudolph and team in terms of i want to buy a car if you know and you're in and, and you understand what that score means, it mm. gives you that 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 power and it takes away the angst from applying for credit. And it literally okay. is as simple as that. And I mean, who wants to know? You've said th there's these three important th digits in, in in your financial life. Who cares? Who wants to know why why these three digits? So any consumer needs to you gets those digits or the, the, the that score literally translates in your the chance that you have or the probability you have of qualifying for credit. So both for a consumer, it's important because the higher that score, the more probable you are for qualifying for financing for a vehicle, for instance. Okay. And the, 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 the credit provider like West Bank will use that score in their decisioning process to determine whether you will qualify for credit, number one. And then secondly, what um, level of interest rates you'll get. So it's very, very important and beneficial for you as a consumer to build up a very strong bureau score because okay. that bureau score will definitely, definitely drive, empower you to get credit and the credit provider makes a lot of their decisioning or bases a lot of the decisioning in terms of what credit you get, what interest rates you get, et cetera, et cetera, based on that score. So building a good credit score is quite important and we'll get Absolutely. into that. Yeah. Um, a little later. I'm sure you've got some some gems and some nuggets um, yes, in terms yes. of how that can happen. But I want to bring it um, to you, Rudolf. I want to bring the discussion to you in terms of credit score and finance applications. You know, what do they mean for finance applications um, and how important? I mean, Yako made mentioned that you, whatever it is that you apply for in terms of credit, in this case, I'm applying for a vehicle. How important is a credit score in that part of the process? Thanks, Lebs. Um, I do think that, uh, firstly, uh, uh, one must realize that your credit score is um, complete. It's not a mythical number that's kept by someone else about you. Um, it is completely uh, within your control. It is the mm -hmm. way you apply for finance, the amount of credit that you take in your personal name and how you service your debt that determines your credit score. That's the first thing. So it's your own behaviors that, that drive your, your credit score. 
um, from how that impacts your ability to 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 uh, take on additional credit. Well, um, the the credit score is a reflection of your uh, the way you conduct your financial affairs, okay. and that is a, that gives the bank um, when we do an assessment on 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 an individual. Uh, a view of how you conduct your affairs and what is it then tells us what is the likelihood or it informs us the likelihood of of this person servicing his debt uh, is should he be taking additional loans with West Bank. So it's a very important um, aspect that we look at. Okay. Not the only aspect that we look at, of course, but mm -hmm. it's a very important aspect that we look at when assessing a person's um, credit application incredibly important is your ability to afford that credit. So when credit's assessed, there's multiple factors that's looked at. The two core factors are the score, but most importantly, affordability. So the very first thing, and the two aren't related, affordability is purely a function of, do you have enough money to be able to pay for this additional credit? And that's literally a function of, if you've got... 10,000 Rand income today, your total expenses are 6,000 Rand, your living expenses other than your, your, your credit, et cetera, et cetera, is another two, so you have 2,000 Rand available. Is that 2,000 Rand sufficient to buy this new car, as, as an example? Once that check is done, then it is right. Are you good for credit? And therefore, when we're looking at good for credit, that's when the score comes in, because that score then says you can clearly afford it, because we've done the very first most important assessment in terms of affordability. Then what we look at is say, well, is that score, which is an indicator of how you conduct your current credit mm. um, uh, engagements that you've had, that you have with credit providers. And when, when we talk about credit providers, we literally talk any credit account that you as a consumer have, whether it is a banking product, whether it's a vehicle loan, a home loan, a credit card or a personal loan, or whether it's a retail store card, mm -hmm. like a, a Fushini card, for instance, all those accounts are taken into consideration. And those accounts and the performance on those accounts are then used to determine what that score is based on the, the, your, your ability to manage them, as Rudolf rightfully said. And those two factors together then determines, yes, Lebo is good for a new car based on the fact, number one, you can afford it, which is most important, and then based on p uh, historic performance of existing credit accounts. Okay. Um, Rudolf, you want to add maybe to what Jack is saying? Yeah, thanks, Lebs. Um, credit worthiness is a very important aspect, and... Um, it's not just <clears throat> a matter of someone earning, say, 20,000 Rand, um, and whose disposable income on the 20,000 Rand might be, I don't know, 5,000 Rand. Um, that person could be, be more credit worthy than someone that's earning 100,000 Rand, but his expenses come to 99,000 Rand. You know, so it's not just a matter of how much money you earn. Ah. It's it's ab it's about the combination of factors. Um, how, of course, the, how much you earn is important, but how well you manage your expenses and your living expenses, and how much disposable income that you have that that determines your 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 ability to to seek additional credit. I like that. I like that differentiation. That it's not necessarily a score of how much you earn. So it does not mean that if you earn more money, you, you, you've got a higher chance of being credit worthy than somebody who earns less. It's all in relation to what you earn versus what you spend and what you can afford, if I'm hearing you correctly. Exactly. Spot on. Spot on. Okay. And, and Yako, you, quite an interesting point that you made there earlier on, um, linking to what Rudolf said that, you know, it's factual. It's a factual number. You said it picks up along the lines of your, your conduct. Is there a factual process, a factual system that scores us the same factually as, as Rudolf says, that it's a factual number, it's not a myth? Absolutely, absolutely. So the data used to score an individual, to calculate that credit score, and, and, and whether it's an experience score, or irrespective of which experience score it is, um, is the data is submitted from all credit providers. And that's the wonderful thing about this, 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 this a credit score like an experience score. All the credit data that's provided by, whether it's West Bank, whether it is the retailers, any account that you have as a consumer is submitted through a central organization in South Africa and it's provided to the credit bureau mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. So every single month, the Bureau has provided the latest month's worth of information of you and all your credit accounts. So it's not, you don't have to do a thing. All you have to do as a consumer is make sure that you pay your accounts on time 
and you pay them as regular as is needed as per the contract of the mm. agreement. Automatically every month, a credit provider like West Bank will submit that payment data to the credit bureau and us as Experian then update that score every single month automatically and we make it available to you as a consumer for free. So you could effectively go and look at your bureau score for free mm. on the Experian My Credit Check website. And you get it for free every single month where we'll physically show you this is your score. And then that same score is made available to West Bank, for instance, for Rudolf and his team to use that score in the decision on the premise that you've got that disposable income to, to buy a car and to pay for the car. Mm. So it's not a myth. It's not made up. It's not you need to provide us anything. Once you, in, uh, once you in, uh, enter into a credit agreement, mm. irrespective of whom that credit agreement with, a credit score is as powerful for a person that has a home loan, a vehicle loan, a credit card, and a personal loan versus a person that only has a personal loan and a retail store card. It doesn't matter how many uh, credit accounts you have. It's okay. completely irrelevant. It's com it only looks at how you pay your credit accounts and how you manage your credit accounts that's important. So it's not relevant the number of accounts. It's literally relevant on how you conduct and manage those accounts. Okay. Um, Rudolf, you're, you're welcome to add. Yeah, thanks, Lebo. Um, uh, just to add on to, to what we're talking about, um, we are actually, as a credit provider, um, we are uh, obliged by the National Credit Act to, and, and not just us, all of the credit providers to report this information yes. to the credit bureaus. So, so you as a person applying for credit, you don't have an option to opt out and not report your information as mm -hmm. well. So, so we have to report all of this information. So the, the, the um, information like the amount that, that the person is, uh, is taking on, what the monthly payments are, the duration of the mm -hmm. contract, and things like that that we have to report to the credit companies so that um, that information is then available to anybody else who want to enter uh, or to, to extend credit to someone who's applying for for finance um, okay. uh, it's so, so all of the information is then as 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 uh, our guest had pointed out stored through this re uh, the central repository into mm. into the credit uh, uh, bureaus uh, okay. just to add on to that uh, the bank when we do when we assess someone's uh, finance application we, of course, look at it from the bank side as how much risk does this person uh, pose to the bank if we extend a credit to you? Um, and unfortunately, it's, it's a reality that the worse your credit score is, the higher the interest rate the bank will charge you because the more risk the bank takes to extend credit to you. Conversely, if you manage your finances very well and if you live within your means, and, um, and if you've got a good credit score, the bank will then reward you with a lower interest rate because uh, we see less risk in extending credit to you. And so, and so you will be then rewarded with a, with a lower interest rate. So there's a direct correlation between how you manage your finances, what your credit score is, and ultimately the interest rate that any, any bank will charge you, um, when you when you extend further credit. Great. Um, I, I did promise that we will touch on a bit of sort of public um, activity in terms of social media. Um, somebody here says, always check your partner's credit score before any commitment. And if it's less than 500, run. Yaku, you spoke about numbers earlier on. I think now is probably the best time to, you know, to talk about those numbers. What does yep. 500 mean? What does 1,000 mean? What does 2,000 mean? Um, if you can just maybe take us through the numbers in terms of is it good? Is it fair? Is it bad? Yeah. So the, the score typically, so the Experian Bureau score ranges between 500 and 999. So what is a good score? Anything above 640 is really good. And it is a high probability of qualifying for credit on different products. Okay. So it's not all products will use the same score. So a vehicle loan and a home loan will look at higher scores because the amount of money being lent is high, bigger the term of the loan is bigger, so they'll use typic they'll consider typically higher scores, right, Rudolf? Where in the retail world where we also operate, the retailers lend you a thousand rand. So mm. they will take a lot more. They'll lend money to you at six at a score of six hundred, where a, a, a vehicle loan they won't lend to you at six hundred. So it's also how it interprets mm. relative to the value of the loan, the term over which the loan is, and the the, the literal the, 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 the as I said, the value that you're mm. exposed to. Okay, and 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 Niako, is it true that you know the more sort of accounts, and I say accounts loosely, could be card, could be retail. 
uh, whatever it is that you pay on credit, the more accounts you have, the better chance you have of, you know, accumulating or having a credit score. Is it true? Because that, that, is, that is actually quite a myth. Yeah. That, that you literally exists. need an account to have a bureau score. Okay. So an experience score, you need one trade line and pay that trade line for a period of at least six months, then you have a score. It's unlikely that you're going to qualify for a secured lending product like a vehicle loan and a home loan if you don't have any other credit products. Mm. But you can certainly qualify for a retail store card or a loan, a personal loan, mm. if you don't have any credit. That's how people okay. start their credit journey. So we've done a lot of research on this, and we looked mm. at five years' worth of uh, uh, account applicants accounts opened over a five-year period so we looked at 130 million accounts for, th uh, for uh, on, on 50 million consumers and we identified that four out of ten consumers start their credit journeys with a retail card mm -hmm. and that's because that's the easiest place to get credit and that's where you learn to manage credit effectively it's a small amount you pay it off over every month, and that's very important because as you pay it, whether it's a retail account or whether it's a, a small loan, a personal loan, pay that account effectively because over a period of time, your bureau score gets built up. So mm. your, your experience bureau score will go higher and higher as you pay that one account. And then as you prove that you can pay, you'll get the bank step mm. in and offer a credit card and a bank personal loan and then a vehicle loan because it's got nothing to do with how many accounts you have. Mm. It's got to do with how you manage those accounts that will influence Rudolf and team to decide, yes, I'm willing to lend credit uh, money to level to buy a car. Mm. So the myth that you need lots of credit to get credit is not true. Okay. One account is enough. Just pay it properly. And you did say that every month they can get a fee report. Absolutely. Um, so there's no reason really why they should not check their, their credit score essentially. Yes, and it's available on the FNB app. There it's we go. It's available on the app. Every month you get your free score on the FNB app. Yako, you know, how does one boost and, and uh, straight into it, how does one boost their credit score? What are the kinds of things that I do, one, or maybe don't do, um, you know, to make sure that I get a good credit score? You, when you spoke about those numbers earlier on, I started thinking there must be specific things that there must yep. be sorry specific things that one can do um, to boost their credit score. Yeah, so so a lot of the variables that's used in that credit score is your existing credit accounts and how you pay and manage those accounts. So do you draw down on a facility, for instance? So when I say draw down on a facility, you have a home loan, mm. and you have an ac you have access to 500,000 Rand on that home loan. Do you continuously draw down to the maximum or do you diligently pay that outstanding balance down over time? A car, do you every single month pay down that balance that that balance consistently comes down? A credit card, do you always max the credit card and pay the minimum? Or do you key, have a 60% utilization on your credit card permanently and then you pay them the, the, the minimum amount or the, an amount more than the minimum amount to keep it at that utilization level? Mm -hmm. Those are key variables that w when you go look at a bureau score. What would positively impact it is, is if you pay it down quicker because it clearly shows that you can afford it. You're improving mm. your payment and it comes, it comes down quicker. What negatively impacts your bureau score is if you're in financial distress and you start maxing facilities that you never did in the past. So there's a lot of looking at consistency of how you manage your credit. So are you consistently paying it down? Are you consistently utilizing the same amount of your credit card? Mm. Are, you, are you taking on a lot more credit suddenly and historically you didn't, or have you paid down a loan and then you get another loan after that? Or are you taking two or three loans suddenly? A lot of those type of information, that type of information will be an indicator that A, this person is consistently paying, not taking on too much more credit, not maximizing facilities. There is affordability to continue to manage these facilities. Mm. Or you can see suddenly there's a big drawdown on facilities mm. and the person is using more facilities than they did in the past. And that could be an indication of the stress, which will translate into your bureau score st st starting to decrease. And the other way, starting to increase if you pay more. So if you can afford it, pay more and your score will increase. Mm. Just be careful that when you're in distress, that you mm. don't very quickly start pulling, drawing down on facilities because okay. that would negatively impact it. In cases like that, when you're in distress, go and talk to the bank. Mm. Do not wait for it to get get for you to get into a bad situation. 
the one thing with a credit score, it's what it's your credit score decreases as you miss payments. Okay. When you miss payments, it hampers your ability to get credit or to renegotiate the terms of your existing credit. And what we see with a lot of consumers, especially in the current difficult environment, irrespective of whether they have one account or 10 accounts, doesn't matter. When they're in distress, they wait too long to engage with a financial institution. And when you mm -hmm. wait too long and your account is two months, three months in arrears, it makes it very difficult for a financial institution such mm -hmm. as West Bank to have a conversation with you as a person that borrowed money from them. Whereas if you're still up to date, you haven't missed the payment, but you're struggling mm -hmm. to make it, contact the bank immediately and then start talking about it because sure. it's far easier to then negotiate revised payment terms or find a way out of the situation. Mm. Rudolf, um, maybe let me bring it to you. Um, what are the trends when it comes to, what are you seeing when it comes to car finance applications, um, you know, one, so as, as they start this journey, but two, in terms of keeping up, you know, what are the things that, that, that we are seeing when it comes to a book, when it comes to credit readiness? especially given these difficult financial times you know are, are more people affording are we approving more people than we used to are we more flexible maybe let me you know just yeah allow you to to answer this one because you are in the business you see quite a lot of these trends i, I, I presume lebo so of course we, we we're just coming out of um out of a terrible couple of years with COVID, where um, it was uh, very unusual circumstances for many, many, many people where a lot of people's incomes were, were significantly aff affected. So from a credit perspective, there was a, a de decline in, in, in the credit market with a lot of people uh, defaulting on their loans. And, uh, and, and I guess uh, we would have seen credit scores also decreasing quite substantially during this time. Um, and of course, uh, the number of credit loans that we could approve over this period has also had also dropped. Um, we are now a couple of months, almost a year, um, after COVID, and um, we are starting to see, um, well, what we are seeing is record number of monthly applications. That's, that's the first observation. So a lot of people applying, uh, applying for finance. Um, and our approval rates are starting to normalize to the numbers that they were before, before COVID. So we are starting to get to the same levels that we approved before, before COVID. And that, that just tells me people have um, managed, are starting to, to, get the, to, to repair their credit profiles. Starting uh, credit scores are starting to lift up back to, back to the numbers where they were mm. before. And maybe Yaku can share with yep. us what, what they're seeing from a credit bureau perspective. Yeah, and, and quite ironically, um, Rudolf, the, the, during COVID, we actually saw the converse. We saw credit scores go up because people paid their accounts better simply because they couldn't go out, they couldn't spend money on, on, on holidays, they couldn't spend money on, on restaurants, etc. So by default, South African consumers are brilliant at managing mm. credit. The extra money went into paying their credit and they it's paid okay. it better and the scores actually went up during COVID simply because they had this extra capacity at extra affordability or the extra um, uh, 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 discretionary income and they used it to service credit. It was fantastic to see. And from a, from a credit provider and from a South African consumer perspective, that's amazing. South African consumers are, are in a different league. They understand what it means to be financially fit and financially mm -hmm. healthy. What's happening now is exactly what Rudolf said. We've seen the demand for credit come back across all products. And in the vehicle and home loan space, we've seen supply return to pre-COVID levels. What's different is in the unsecured lending space where it's credit cards and personal loans and retail store cards, we still see credit supply 30, between 25 and 30% below pre-COVID levels. So on the unsecured, in the unsecured market, it's not where it was before, but in the secured market, it has returned. Okay. And again, that's a function of the people that have a very strong score and paid down their credit facilities have access to credit. Interesting. And those that manage their credit better during COVID have access to credit. It's easier to lend to people that pay their credit. Whereas the new entrants into the market are at a bit of a disadvantage mm -hmm. because it's the, there's a difference between those that were in the market pre-COVID and those that's entering the market now. With the supply being lower, it's more difficult to get access to credit, specifically starters in the retail world with mm -hmm. the retailers at 35% lower than pre-COVID levels. So they are very conservative mm -hmm. um, and still remain conservative. 
Um, and the, the people that were in the credit space that diligently manage their credit have access to secured lending products. Interesting. Scenario, I go and apply for credit. I get approved. Um, Rudolph, maybe it's a car or it's a retail account, whatever the case may be. Then I don't, I don't take it up. You know, I don't take this car for delivery. I change my mind, whatever the case may be. What does that look like on my, on my credit score in terms of an Experian or any other credit house? So the, the score is influenced by an account opened and how you pay that account. Very few, if any organization, uses the amount of times you apply. So an inquiry mm. as an indicator or a characteristic in calculating your score. Um, okay. the, 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 it's actually taking it up and using that credit and paying it or not paying it are far more stronger, are far stronger uh, indicators of and, and influences your score significantly more. And, and in fact, in total, as opposed to I've applied for credit or in an instance where someone sends you an invitation to credit, that invitation for credit, the Credit Act is very clear. You cannot pre-approve someone for credit. You can invite them to apply and only upon conclusion of a formal application do we register the account on the Bureau because that is then sent to us by the credit provider on a monthly basis that shows your payments on that account. And only then is that taken into consideration for your score. Mm -hmm. All these apply for credits. You can have this credit. You are likely to qualify for credit. Doesn't impact your score whatsoever okay. because there is no formal contractual credit agreement in place where payment behavior is tracked against. So only once it's open do you start tracking the activity? Correct. The account Correct. is open or you've taken it up? Or yeah. Okay. So what we do see is the amount of times you apply. So if you go from applicant from place A to place B to place C to place D, we'll see all those inquiries. But as Rudolf said, when you apply for a vehicle loan, it's submitted to all the banks mm. and all those inquiries for credit come through. If that was the case that an inquiry could negatively impact your score, a, a, a system like that would have a negative impact. So it doesn't because we know that inquiries get submitted from multiple points. Mm. So inquiries aren't used in ter determining your score, not at all. It is only once the account is opened, we track payment behavior of that account after the event. All right. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that, Jaco. I think it's quite important to make that distinction, especially because, I mean, as Rudolf rightly said, it is a long-term decision that you make. So when you are in the research phase, chances are you make a lot of so-called inquiries. Correct. All yes. right. Thank you. Great. Back to that interesting tweet that I promised earlier on. Are you blacklisted or have you uh, have a low credit score but need vehicle finance, home loan, or boost low scoring. Contact XXX, this person says their name, there's a contact number and um, you know an email address essentially. We see a lot of these on, on Twitter and on social media, people promising to, to get you in the clear um, or you know when you've got a low credit score to extend credit to you. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Don't get caught with that. It, it cannot work, it's impossible. It's impossible. There is the only way you ever improve your bureau score, your whether it's your experience score, or irrespective of which other bureau score, the data that's used in calculating that score comes from the banks, comes from the retailers. We don't make that data up ourselves. Mm. We're a receiver of the information. We cannot, as a credit bureau, change that data. We cannot remove the data from the bureau. The only institution that can change that profile or your payment behavior is the credit provider so we mm -hmm. receive it if anyone tells you that it's a hoax you're going to lose money <laughs> don't get caught with that so look out for those and and, and don't yes. fall into that trap Rudolf you want to weigh in on that yeah Lebo um so I mentioned the National Credit Act um a little bit too earlier um the National Credit Act also makes it illegal for anybody to extend credit to a person who's blacklisted Th that is deemed as reckless uh, lending uh, under the National Credit Act. So anybody who promises to give you a loan or to sort out something for you for a car or whatever, they are outside. Uh, they are operating outside of the boundaries of, of of what's legal. And and when you when you as a consumer enter into into any sort of agreement with that, you are exposing yourself to risk to engaging with people that 
uh, that are unscrupulous. Um, they will probably charge you massive uh, interest rates um, and you, you might end up losing more than what you'll gain. Mm. So, so, so if it looks like a duck and swims like a duck, chances are it's a duck, right? Yep. Correct. <laughs> so if it doesn't look legit... Uh, are they hunting for ducks, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't fall for it, essentially. That's, that's what I'm yep. hearing. Um, now, I've got a good credit score. Life is rosy. I apply for car finance. I get it. Then life happens. You know, um, I, I don't afford it. Obviously, my credit profile is boosted. It goes down because life happens, you know. How long, Yaku, um, is, is one in this fix? I mean, allow me to call it a fix. Um, I cannot afford my car. My credit score is looking bad. You've got this information on me that's showing everybody else. You know, so, so maybe two questions. How long does it stay there for everybody else to see? And two, um, can I go next door and knock on somebody else's door to say, you know, I need more credit, if I can put it that way? Yeah, so, so if you get into distress... Again, that data that indicates that you're in distress, we receive from the credit provider. So you miss a payment at West Bank. West Bank will submit the data that says, Yaku missed the, a payment, he's one month in arrears. I miss another payment. We'll receive the information from West Bank that says, Yaku's two months in arrears. And that two months in arrears now starts negatively impacting your credit report. If you think you're, gonna, you're in financial distress or you're entering financial distress, protect your score by contacting the credit mm, providers like and that. negotiate with them in terms of talking. And the one thing I can guarantee you through experience, I've spent many years of my career in the banking world, in the retail world. Mm. I know for a fact, as a credit provider, you would far rather speak to a consumer at the onset of their credit distress and negotiate mm. terms that is favorable for both parties then wait for the account to go seriously into arrears and then you get into that position where it's difficult for the credit provider mm. to get you out of there, to help you out of that distress and for you to get out of the stress because you multiple payments mm. behind. Um, okay. and, and that's important. And, I like that. And, and, and the myth against blacklisting, there's no such thing as blacklisting. It is 100% a function of a reflection of how you pay your accounts. And, 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 and um, you know, lastly, as, as a customer, I've, I've had a bad running uh, with my first card, West Bank, and years later, I work, I rehabilitate, you know, um, is, is there a way that when I get my second car with West Bank, you know, West Bank is more lenient on me because I'm, I mean, I am a, an ex-customer, you know, or do I have to go through that process again? So, Lebo, when you, when you apply for finance at any car dealership, they would submit your finance application to all of the banks. Even if you buy your second or your third or your fourth car, all of the banks would, would receive that application and send a quotation back to the, to the finance and insurance manager at the dealership. So, so invariably, we would, we, would, um, we would review the application and we, we would, based on, on um, the remediation of mm -hmm. how you've, you've, you've fixed your account with us, um, and what your credit score looks like now that you fix things at the credit bureau, we would then reassess that application, and then we would um, we would either approve or decline it. So, so it is quite important. Thanks, Rudolf. It is quite important that you go through that process again because a lot would have changed. A from what I'm hearing uh, between then and now, um, but also because your score or your credit worthiness is kept at a sort of a wider level. So even if I was a good West Bank customer, things change. It's not, you know, my reapplication with West Bank in future is not based on my history, if I'm hearing you correctly. Uh, absolutely. But um, I think we've sp w a key theme that's, that's come across today is the consumer must take control. Mm. So if you had a bad experience and if you, if you went into, into default on your, say, your West Bank account, um, if you as the consumer take control and you fix that account, you pay, you pay the arrears, you engage with the bank, you phone us proactively, you make an arrangement and you, 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 you bring your account back up to date, then there's no, there's n we, we don't hold it against you. It's, uh, in fact, it's, uh, you know, it proves that it speaks to credit worthiness again. You, it, you've shown that you, that you take ownership and that you fix your things. However, if you do the, the opposite, if you just leave your account in arrears, we report that arrears to the credit bureau. Mm. If you wanted to apply a car for a car with another bank, then they would submit the application to the credit bureau and they would see that you are in arrears with West Bank. 
it would count against you even if you were to apply with another finance institution. So, so the key theme is take control of your financial financial matters, take control of your credit, manage your finances well, live within your means, engage with all of your credit providers, and if you have a problem, then be proactive and contact them because uh, there's not there's not there's nothing to be embarrassed about, you know, when things go wrong in life. It happens to to many many people, and you must just see it as a a business transaction that on, that's not working out um, and, and contact your bank and speak to them because uh, ultimately we're here to help you uh, and to help our customers and to, and to find a, a, a common solution for that's in the best interest for everybody. So, so we, we really want to be in contact with our customers um, and, and um, we are here to help our customers resolve whatever issues they may have. Great. Any last words from you, uh, Rudolf, as key takeouts to the consumer out there who's listening? Um, in terms of credit worthiness and your credit score and essentially how to improve it should you be in a position to apply for car finance? Lebo, uh, credit, you know, it's it's something that one shouldn't fear. It's, it's a tool and a mechanism for one to further yourself in life, whether it be buying a car or paying for studies or buying a house. Um, but credit is also something that can be dangerous if you if you go into excess. Um, you know, so so... The, the advice is for consumers to to think uh, to think very clearly about uh, entering into the credit market, mm. how they expose themselves to to credit, um, and and to and it's like anything else, you know, when you when you go into too much of anything, then you're going to have a problem. So 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 to to be conservative when it comes to credit. Um, and and to think about the after effects because any sort of a credit agreement that you enter into, it's it's normally not you know one or two months. When you buy a car, you know you're looking at seventy two months. When you when you buy a house, you're looking at twenty years. So so it's long term obligations that you're getting yourself into, and you need to consider where you are in life and where you want to be in life uh, when you enter into these contracts. Um, and to and to always be conservative with credit because you you, you never know what what the future holds. Nobody certainly nobody would have foreseen uh, COVID hitting the world. Mm. Um, and to always have a little bit of, of of extra fat in your budget so that so that you you have that 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 money for a rainy day. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, gentlemen. I don't think it does get any better than that in terms of explaining uh, credit worthiness. Um, you know, just maybe a few nuggets in summary. Make sure that you are honest with yourself. Don't wait until you know you are in, in the danger. Engage your credit uh, provider while there is still time. And the power is in your hands as a consumer. You can access your credit report for free monthly. Do that so that you don't have a WTF moment when it comes to your credit worthiness. It has been a great conversation. Thank you so much once again um, for joining us. You are the experts. We, are, we really, really appreciate the valuable information. Great nuggets and great t- uh, sort of takeouts uh, for us to you know, ponder on. It has been a great conversation. Thank you. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. We hope that you found it useful. Now go and subscribe to be notified when our next informative episode is available.